Welcome to the channel investors. This is the CAM recap show where we cover three stocks. We have AMD, Click, and MDC. We're going to start with the news portion for each of these three stocks. Very jam-packed session for the news portion. And then we're going to transition into the technical analysis for these three companies, trying to find the best spots to either buy or sell a stock. So let's just dive right into it, starting with AMD. So AMD for the week, they started off at about $111, dropping to $105 for the week. Uh, their earnings report is actually soon to arrive, or about February 1st is the expected date. Uh, some news for AMD. Uh, their new AMD Ryzen 6000 series processors are built using the TSMC 6 nanometer process technology and deliver unprecedented levels of built-in graphics pro performance offering revolutionary 1080p AAA gaming along with cutting-edge features and superb battery life. So the reason I highlight this section is mainly for the mention of TSMC. So that is Taiwanese Semiconductors. That company is has a larger market cap than AMD. They are also in the semiconductor industry. And they're a company that I'd like to start looking into, uh, mainly because they are in that semiconductor industry. They're larger than AMD in terms of market cap. And the fact that they're working with another uh, company that is well known, such as AMD, they also have other partnerships that are promising. Uh, I'd like to start tracking them in the near future. So in the near future, we'll probably see some videos uh, focusing on them. Uh, more on the, their processor, uh, compared to last generations, this 6000 series can use up to 30% less power for video conferencing, which is great considering the remote type of work that the economy is getting used to, especially in corporate America. So that'll be good for the newer laptops. Uh, the 6000 series processors are the first x86 processors to fully support advanced Windows 11 security features with the integrated Microsoft Pluton security processor, offering a secure system, enabling a true chip to cloud security. Cloud, of course, is another hot topic. Uh, this is wonderful for them as they're able to uh, quickly and efficiently take files from their laptop or computer and direct it right to the cloud with maximum security. And this is very crucial for corporate America especially. So the fact that they're able to make that transition as secure as possible, that is a very promising sign. Uh, we're going to scan through this. These are the models of the 6000 series. So I'm not going to go into details, but I'm just going to scroll through it. You can kind of uh, pause the video if you want and review that yourself. Uh, so the, the first laptops powered by AMD 6 Ryzen 6000 series processors are expected to be available by leading OEM partners such as Asus, Dell, and HP beginning in February 2022. So that's next month. These processors are gonna hit the market. Uh, along with that, we do have, I just wanna share some of the other partners that they're working with that support that 6000 series. So once again, we have Acer, we have Asus, we have Alienware, Lenovo, HP, and Microsoft. So this is a very solid group of companies that support AMD and their new series. So very promising there. Uh, to look at the bad side, so this is now three reasons that you may want to consider selling AMD in the future. I am not on this boat, but this is it's good to see the alternative perspective, especially for this. So one of the big things was Intel seems to be uh, revamping their uh, business model, trying to get more aggressive. And so one of the things, and this was brought up at the CES conference last month or earlier this month. So Intel's on the road to redemption as its latest Alder Lake processors are showing signs of taking back shares from AMD. AMD has been gradually chipping away at Intel's uh, CPU market share. Intel is now trying to take it back. So Intel's new manufacturing process 
is allowing it to make processors that are not just fast, but are also competitively priced when compared to AMD. So want to keep out for Intel. That's another company that I'm considering tracking in the near future also. So be aware of that. These are, this is a big competitor. This is AMD and Intel. Uh, next would be AMD's sales to Microsoft and Sony may take a hit if the console manufacturers are forced to lower their production this year due to component shortages. Uh, so this, once again, relates to the semiconductors, but it also might relate to other components. Uh, and I only say that because it doesn't specifically say uh, semiconductor shortages. It just says components. I'm assuming they mean semiconductors here. Uh, but because of that, their EESC business component, which up top, it's the enterprise embedded and semi-custom business, might lose momentum due to those lower console sales. So something to keep in mind. And the last, the third of the reasons is NVIDIA in terms of their GPU, their graphics cards, uh, controlled 83% of that market in third quarter of 2021. So literally about three, four months ago when those were released, they controlled 83% of that market. Uh, last year, NVIDIA controlled 82% of that market. So they're clearly, they have a tight uh, hold of that market, uh, right in that 80% range. And in fact, they actually gained a percent in that market over the past year. NVIDIA is even expected to step up its game in 2022 with the launch of its next generation Ada Lovelace graphics cards that rumors suggest could be twice as fast as the company's current offerings. NVIDIA is a company that I'm actually purposely choosing not to cover. Uh, of course, there's going to be mentions here and there, such as like this in this article. Uh, the reason for not kind of following them as closely is because there's so many other YouTubers that do follow them. I'm sure you can watch their videos to see their coverage. But because of that, I'm going to stay away from the video specifically. Once again, if it does pop up, I will make mention to it, such as in this article. And so, so continuing with that GPU sector uh, market, uh, experts are estimating that it's going to be a $54 billion market come 2025. And in 2020, it was about $23.6 billion. And so now I want to show you real quick. Uh, so this is AMD's annual report. And they have, and this is in 2020. Uh, 2021 should be coming out uh, in the next week. Uh, but right here, we have highlighted this computing and graphics, their net revenue for 2020. That's 6 billion, about 6.5 billion. Now, I, I looked through it, and they, that's a combination of their CPU and GPU units. And so they don't have a split between those two. I wish they did, because that would, that would help us understand what actually is about, um, what's their market share. We could maybe find the videos in a report and see if they have their breakdown uh, because that's definitely going to be way too high uh, especially if it's gpu portion because six six billion if it was just gpu considering that the current market in 2020 was 23 billion yeah that that's way too much market share so that i have to imagine that's mainly cpu net revenue but it just kind of gives you an idea of where uh, AMD's at in terms of those two markets combined. Uh, moving on to the next article, so we have uh, the company in their fourth quarter. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, their, uh, their market uh, report release date is actually going to be next week. It was They thought it was coming out uh, this past week on the 25th, but no, it's, it got pushed back to Tuesday, February 1st. Uh, currently, their fourth quarter earnings is pegged at 75 cents per share, so that's an indicator that we're going to watch. Uh, and this is a, if they hit that 75 cents, that's going to be a 44% year-over-year growth. There's also consensus that revenues are going to be 4.5 billion for that quarter, which is a 39.3% growth compared to last year. So those are two marks that we're going to actually monitor uh, once those annual report 
once that annual report does come out. Uh, AMD stock is actually trending down. Uh, it's working on a third straight weekly decline and seventh weekly decline in the last eight weeks. It actually is probably even worse. Uh, but since we started this channel, here is just a handful of semiconductor stocks. And we see AMD here up at the top. Since we started following them, just this year alone, they've actually gone down 29.2%. You can see that they are just falling and falling fast. But this is the semiconductor industry as a whole. Uh, once again, though, we need to factor in how the economy is doing as a whole. It's not just semiconductors that are crashing right now. It is literally every market is dropping rapidly, just like this. So I do expect this to turn around at some point. I just don't know when exactly, but there's gonna be a bottom here at some point. But this just gives you an idea. You know, we were thinking back in our probably our first video of the year, how we thought AMD was fair at about like 130, maybe even 140, and now they're at 105. So if you believe them when they were at 130, then you should definitely believe them in them now at 105. Uh, it's going to be hard to time that bottom, but if you do it just by consistently in small chunks, uh, you'll be able to hit the bottom and maybe come out uh, perfectly. Uh, so something else at that CES 2022, the AMD Ryzen 6000 series mobile processors received an innovation award, so very good. Among the reasons listed for their recognition was the fact that Ryzen 6000 series laptop chips are the first to be equipped with integrated graphics that are powerful enough to play demanding PC game titles without the need for a standalone GPU. So this is kind of going at NVIDIA here. That is what NVIDIA is known for. And so here's AMD. They're kind of sticking their stick in the ground saying, hey, we're, we're here to compete too. I think I have something else here. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, Intel actually gained shares, I mentioned this earlier, at that CES uh, uh, show. So Intel is shaping up to be a serious competitor once again. If it succeeds, Intel's recovery could well have the effect of keeping AMD stock growth at lower rates than the numbers investors have been enjoying in recent years. So that's something that we covered not too long ago, a couple articles ago. Uh, we need to watch Intel, so we are going to start tracking them in the near future, see what they're up to. I believe it's going to be a slow transition, but Intel has a lot of the market, especially in the CPU market. So if they are able to achieve a higher standard in what they offer customers and clients, then that very well, just like this article says, could lower AMD's expected growth rates so we want to start tracking that uh intel or i'm sorry amd uh another uh, capital markets analyst john vin is following them also and he actually said amd is to be overweight with that expected target price of 155 uh, so people still believe in this company uh, the fact that it's dropping is something out of their control but he's basing that on the demand that its data center chips should meaningfully outpace growth in the broader industry, particularly given the links to flexible CSP contracts with tech giants such as Microsoft. The other reason is that pending takeover with Linux, we should be seeing that. Uh, the plan is supposed to be roughly end of March, end of April. Hopefully it uh, you know, transpires by then as expected, but that's still up in the air we're waiting for china's approval on that but if that goes through that's another reason why me along with others believe amd could uh, jump in price uh, and lastly for amd we expect amd to significantly outpace cloud industry growth in 2022 in the high teens as we expect continued market share gains for amd so that's amd let's transition into click so Click started at about 51, high 51, ended at 52, so stay pretty flat for this week. Uh, their annual report should be coming out also on, no, this should be coming out Wednesday, so next week as well. Some news for Click. 
uh, they expanded their portfolio. I mentioned this last week with their next launch. That's K-N-E-X-T, their next launch. Uh, Click recently announced the launch of Next, the new web-based industry 4.0 software solution that connects KNS equipment and enables fleet management, factory automation, and productivity improvement. We all want improvements in productivity, and going along with that automation theme, that is going to be good for uh, their clients' bottom line. So design Next as a cost-effective software module which can be customized to cater to different customer requirements and provide comprehensive solutions for KNAC equipment. So this is supposed to be almost like an add-on feature to their current uh, products, uh, which should help their customers streamline their their own uh, capacity, uh, uh, what is it, Uh, process, Anyway, so Industry 4.0 addresses the growing trend toward automation and data exchange and technology processes within the manufacturing industry. Click has been dedicated to developing and enhancing equipment connectivity and factory automation solutions to drive efficiency and productivity for semiconductor assembly equipment. So once again, their focus is on bringing automation to semiconductor assembly and is going to help reduce conversion times improve productivity and quality, and help address the global chip shortage issue by catering to growing demand with adequate supply. So this is why I got into Click. They are, they're not necessarily with actually making semiconductors, but they are facilitating the semiconductor industry through their machines. So that's how I kind of got into that whole industry in, in general. And that's also why I chose Click. They're a facilitator for that industry. So that's why I got into them. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, currently, their equipment, the semiconductor equipment maker, is expected to earn $5.75 per share for the physical year end in September 2022. So that's months down the road. Uh, this would represent a year of year change of minus 6.4%. So we are gonna monitor that. Uh, Regardless, that is a high dollars per share, especially considering where the stock trades, and that's why I bought them. Their earnings per share compared to their actual uh, stock price is very high. Uh, And we can even go back, so once again, $52. So that's about a 10 times earning ratio, and that's why I like them. Uh, Next article we have, so demand for the equipment that makes semiconductors, click, is a leader in advanced packaging machines that connects chips into efficient designs for original equipment manufacturers, helping boost performance and reliability. Over the past 12 months, revenue was up 144%, very good, and earnings per share skyrocketed nearly 600% to $5.78, making today's stock go for around 10 times trailing earnings. So we'll actually go into the technical analysis soon and we'll kind of digest that Uh, single line there. Uh, They're known to be cyclical, but given the ongoing chip shortage, this year's results should be similar. So once again, that's why I'm sticking with semiconductors, at least for this year. We'll see as the year goes on if we want to stick with it for another year. Uh, Their CEO, CEO, Fusion Chen, has uh, diversified the company into machines that make mini and micro LED panels, which would go which should grow in prevalence as demand for high-end screens takes off. So they are diversifying, they're adding a new revenue stream. So I like the sound of that. It it did, Click did raise its dividend by 21% to a yield of 1.1%. So they do have dividends, which is also a factor of why I like them and why I bought into them. And they've also started repurchasing their stock. So this makes sense. If their stock's gonna continue to drop, they're gonna repurchase it uh, as a better price and which should help boost the stock price for the people that still do own the stock. It should help drive that price up in the future. Uh, next we have the most recent consensus estimate is calling for quarterly revenue of 460 million, which would be up 71.73% from a year ago. So once again, that's just a number that we're gonna kind of look for once that annual report comes out. How close were they to that mark? Hopefully they go over, but we're looking for that number, that 460. Uh, And here we go. So 
Uh, they announced that a conference call is scheduled to discuss the company's first physical quarter, 2022, and its business outlook on Thursday, February 3rd. Uh, the company is expected and most likely will issue its first physical quarter 2022 financial results the evening of February 2nd, which is Wednesday. Uh, if you want to listen to that call, we have the information down here. Uh, it's well, you can read it right here. You can pause the video for a second. And there's also the website right down here, this investor.kns.com. Uh, so if you want to access that call or view the live stream, uh, that's where you go to do it. But that's it for Click of recent news. Moving on to MDC. MDC here, uh, they started at about 40, I'm sorry, 47, 47.9, ended up at 48.3. So they actually went up just slightly. Uh, but for the most part, really just flat. Uh, some news for them. Uh, they currently have a market cap of more than $3.6 billion and engages in building and selling single-family detached homes for first time and move up buyers under the name Richmond American Homes. So just a little background there. Uh, but more on this is Zach's consensus estimate for 2022 earnings indicates a 17 year-over-year -year growth. That's why I like them. There is some solid growth number potential there. And they also have a strong earnings per share compared to their stock price, similar to Click. That's how I found out about MDC. And that's why I bought into them. Uh, two other articles for them, very similar to last week. They have a couple new uh, property offerings. So they are pleased to announce the grand opening of highly anticipated Presley Model Homes at Walnut Reserve. And this is in the Baltimore area, so it's convenient access to these interstates and the Metro subway, but it's in Baltimore. So they bought some property there. Uh, their other property of recent purchase what is in uh, future home sites in Mount Dora. So this land is set to become a new Lake County community. Seasons at Wakiva Ridge, which is scheduled to open in the winter of 2022. So later on down the road, they'll have these open for sale. And this is in Florida. It should appeal to buyers relocating from the Orange and Seminole counties and Metro Orlando. It'll be easy access to theme parks, airports, and downtown Orlando. So it's in the Orlando area roughly, but in Florida. Okay, so now we will move to the technical analysis. So we had this uh, dark, uh, blue line in here. Uh, we can actually just take that one out. It would, oh, let me take this out. Uh, so we did have this marker. We're going to actually make this uh, bolder here and we'll stretch this out too. Uh, so this one, we're right around at this mark, this $100 mark. We're at 105, just, short, just shy of it. And if we actually expand out, uh, it's argued, it, it's arguable that this is a good price. Uh, this is honestly what I thought the bottom would be, one, about $100. And once again, that's kind of based on, I'm actually going to draw a horizontal line in here. Let's just draw it right on top of this, right here. So, and can I delete that other line? I'm going to try to grab it. Um, get this line out of here and we'll drag this back up okay so right around that hundred dollar mark uh, we saw some bottoms and if we go back further we kind of see some tops back here uh, we'll zoom in so I mean that is a very strong line plus the psychology behind it one hundred dollars we don't want to go below that it's possible that we will uh, if we do I'm gonna draw another line in here uh, right around here seems like another strong support line, right about 70, 72. Uh, we have a lot of so sideway consolidation over the whole, um, a large majority of 2021, even going back into 2020. Uh, this would be the next line. I mean, if things keep going the way it goes, uh, possibly, like me personally, I'm still going to be buying at this point because we just don't know where that bottom is going to be. Uh, but at this point, if you want to hold on and wait, uh, I, I would agree with that too because it doesn't seem like it's going to slow down anytime soon. 
And so my next buying opportunity would be right around $72. Uh, it could easily go that way. I can't imagine it could break in below that. Of course, I can't predict the future either, but there's a lot of support here in that buffer between 72 and 100. That seems to be a good time to buy. Uh, a lot of support down here at 72, and that's just the, the consolidation there. Uh, but I, I would recommend buying here because once again, we don't know how much lower it's gonna buy, when it's gonna turn around. Uh, just don't put all your eggs in one basket here, but maybe put, I don't know, it's a portion, whatever you think is feels right to you. Uh, but if you want to hold, you know, I could easily see this continuing to drop, maybe even down to that 72 mark. Uh, we are in a strong downtrend right now. Uh, moving on to click. Uh, so click is kind of the same here. We're we're definitely in a downtrend. Uh, we had this support line. I'll, I'll make that a little bit thicker here for us. Uh, and I'll even take it out a little bit. Uh, let's see, right around here. Uh, we're right around $50. I think more specifically, more like $49. We are very close to that also. Uh, we had decent support line there. My next one would be at around $42. Uh, this one's difficult to say just because for the most part, uh, Click has been in a pretty strong uptrend here. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, depending on when you bought, like if you bought in 2020, I mean, we are still in an uptrend here. Uh, in terms of just, it's, it seems like it, it rallied uh, right around October 2020, and then it just kept going up with, with a little bit of consolidation here in early 2020. Uh, then it kind of popped again a little bit, and then we chopped sideways for a good period of time. I, I would say for the most part, uh, there is some degree of consolidation here at around like 42 to say 63 and right now we're at about 52 so um, depending on how uh, bullish you are maybe now maybe continue to buy on this dip opportunity otherwise if if we go below that 42 I mean this thing can just continue to drop all the way down to uh, it looks like our next major support line, if we had to throw something out there, would be about uh, 26, believe it or not. 26 would be like the next strong support line for us. May maybe a little bit higher. Uh, so I'm hoping at the moment that we don't crack below this 42. But if we do, this thing could easily go down to 26. Uh, so we'll just kind of see how it goes. Once again, I'm kind of taking the same mentality that I did with AMD, that, uh, you know, I believed in this company probably whenever I bought in at like 50 or 45 maybe. Uh, so if this thing uh, keeps going down, you know, I'll probably add uh, I, another share or two here and there as it keeps going down because I believed in it then. And based on the news articles I'm seeing, uh, this company is still doing well. I think it's just the entire economy, the, the scare of going into a recession and whatnot is just dragging everything down. Uh, the interest rate hikes, you, there's just a lot of things going on that are outside of the company and its personal performance that is just dra dragging it down. So, uh, But from a technical analysis, our next marker would be roughly 42. Uh, and then beyond that, 26, we have a firm line there. That could be the bottom for this one. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that as weeks pass. And finally, we have MDC. So we actually, let's zoom in a little bit here. Uh, this one is definitely falling, but if you kind of look uh, at a monthly view, uh, going back to about uh, July-ish, probably like July, uh, we do have some decent sideway consolidation. Uh, we had these peaks up here in like the low 60s, and then we just tanked back down into like the high 45 range, and then we just been chopping sideways between about uh, 47, 56, that $10 range roughly, just going sideways. And depending on when you bought, maybe if you bought low, you saw a little bit of gain, but then it dropped down. Uh, so. But for the most part, we're chopping sideways in there, but we're definitely down currently at 48. 
Uh, we drew a support line here at 45. I can make that line a little bit thicker. Uh, once again, there's no real signs of stopping. If I had to draw the next support line, it looks like the company as a whole definitely rallied hard here after that, uh, that shock in uh, the coronavirus here. Uh, we definitely saw a high growth uh, from March up until its peaks, rough work in the $60 range right in April 2021. And since then, uh, I, like I would say a good support line uh, I'll even draw it in here for us. A, a solid support line here, in my opinion, would be right here at, uh, whoop, did I not draw it in? I thought I did. Uh, not sure what happened here. Uh, let's draw this one again. Right around here, uh, right around 41, 41.50 roughly. I mean, that's, I, I see a strong support line if we go back far enough. That would be our next support line. Uh, and that's just based on a bunch of these bottoms we have here. Uh, and that seemed to be some top range right about here in late 2019. Uh, that's just where I'm at right now. That's where my head's at. I. There's a lot of sideway consolidation though between this $42 range and I would say 56. If it goes and breaks beyond those marks, that 42, um, you know, we'll just address it when we get there. But right now, our first line is 45, and the fact that we're at 48 shows that we did see some bounce back here. If we zoom in, uh, we saw that we got very close to that 45.50 range that $45.50 range, and sure enough, it popped back up. So that kind of bodes well for that support line. We'll see how uh, it continues on. I'm gonna actually remove these uptrend lines just because they just don't seem to be uh, a factor at this point. Uh, so that kind of sums up the recap show. Uh, like I said, look for in the future videos on uh, TSM and Intel. Uh, we'll definitely still keep track of AMD and these other companies, maybe just break it out into a couple uh, smaller videos or uh, more uh, one stock specific, one or two stock specific uh, videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, please subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Have a great weekend. Bye.